found it. I asked if it was in his hand, and uh, you had told me that they found it in his grip, in his hand. And, you know, if anybody's taken any kind of criminal investigation classes or anything like that, the infamous death grip is is a fallacy. You know, when people shoot themselves or, you know, something like that, the gun mm. is never in their hand. It, it's, it's a big it's a big law in criminal investigation. And I'm wondering, you know, I mean, how obvious can it be, man, if you find a guy with a shotgun, you know, with his, gri- with his hand gripped around it, you know, all investigators know that that's not, how people that's not how it goes okay is that what happened guys the shotgun was found laying across his chest at an angle with his left hand around the barrel of the wait i'm sorry his right hand around the barrel of the of the shotgun and his left thumb on the trigger is that right no the, the thumb wasn't i, on the I got it just the opposite his right thumb was on the trigger his left hand was around that's the right. barrel because he, a lot of people have questioned that because he was left-handed. But we have that photograph that he took of a, of a toy gun in his mouth where the trigger was inverted yeah. and he had his right thumb. And, and that's the way this was set up, just like in the photograph where he was playing around with a toy rifle. All right, before we go to the next call, we'll talk about the Seattle police. I'm not sure the way this works. Tom, maybe you can shed some light on it. If the police say, uh-uh, no more investigation... Do they have the right to stop it, or can it go over their head? Oh, it can go over their head. The FBI could open it if they find negligence or deliberate cover-up or any type of crime involved in the in the investigation, anything like that. Uh, there are ways that it can be done, yes. In answer to your question, there are ways that it can be done. There are, uh, there are legal processes that could possibly be taken that could possibly reopen the, the case. It's going to have to go over their head because Max and I – We've gone there on at least two occasions, Alan, with a huge satchel of files in our hands and have offered them to the Seattle police mm-hmm. to show them the evidence well, and the to encourage them to reopen the case, and they've told us to get lost. They, you mean they don't even want to see what you have? The lead homicide detective, Sergeant Cameron, who declared the, the case closed, declared it a suicide, he publicly said at the time that if anybody presented him with any evidence that um, – that, that might point to, to murder, he'd be glad to reopen the case. So we came all the way from Montreal to Seattle, yeah. 2,000 miles, with all this new evidence, including the polygraph of, of the guy that claimed he had been offered $50,000 to, uh, to kill Kurt Cobain by Courtney. And we were ready to present this to him. He, he, had, he had publicly declared that he'd be willing to look at any new evidence. We get to the, uh, the homicide division in, in Seattle. We ask to see him. Uh, so, an, another cop comes out, asks us why we're there. We say we have this evidence for uh, Sergeant Cameron, and we just want to give it to him. And uh, he he said that case is closed. Leave. Oh. He said, well, we just want to. We, we can leave it for you at the reception. He said, leave now, or I'll arrest you. Jeez. And, and you know, and you could see Sergeant Cameron peeking out from behind the cubicle at this. Yeah, you damn hippies! Why well, you leave us alone? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, that mentality of not even taking a second look. I mean, what do they think? The the country is, I mean, all these Kurt Cobain fans are a bunch of fanatics. They think you guys and Tom Grant, a bunch of nuts. Well, you know, they just don't want to admit making a mistake. It's a lot of uh, lot of egg on his face if he admits that, that he just rushed to judgment and declared this this high-profile case. You know, it wasn't just your, your run-of-the-mill uh, suicide or murder. It was this high-profile case that had been followed all around the world, and he screwed up. And he wasn't right. going to admit that. Uh, this happens good. all the time. That's not unique to Sergeant Cameron of the Seattle yeah. Police Department. You read about this every day. It happens all over the country. Yeah. All right. We're continuing taking calls on this unbelievable subject. Was it a suicide? Was it a murder? I guess we could say my guests believe it was murder. Ian Halpern and Max Wallace, the book Love and Death. And, of course, Tom Grant is with us. Let's go to those calls. Let's go to uh, line two. Tom, hi. Hey, it's uh, I, have a, I have a question. Um, you guys were just talking about how the, the, the ineptitude of the Seattle Police Department, and my question is, is that um, do, do you think that either the Cameron Fellow or – uh, anybody else on the Seattle Police Department was influenced by uh, Courtney Love or any of her cohorts in any way, shape, or form to, you know, to, to throw to deter the uh, investigation. Well, well that's a very good question. Just said, uh, you know, suspiciously, 
a lot of the cops we spoke to, they're on a first name basis with Courtney. They call her Courtney, Courtney, as if you know she's a close friend of theirs. Now that doesn't mean that uh, she influenced them, but I think the problem here is they just thought it was a rock star, you know, just uh, committing suicide, uh, taking large. You know, just a junkie, and they really didn't care. They really didn't care about the case. I think that's the problem. One of, yeah. one of her friends, she had a she had a fairly good friend uh, named Antonio Terry, who was a narcotics detective in the Seattle Police Department. She'd often brag about this friend of hers, uh, Antonio Terry. You could hear her talking on these tapes about him. He's actually mentioned in the missing persons report. She, she talked to him on my cell phone while we were in the car together also. Yeah, and it, it turns out that Antonio Terry, Antonio Terry was uh, was shot and killed. The first uh, Seattle uh, cop that that had been killed in the line of duty in, in over ten years, years in Seattle. And um, so for this book, we did a little bit of investigation. We thought, you know, a little far fetched that this could have anything to do with Courtney. But nevertheless, we we looked into it. We found out that uh, Terry had been investigating the source of the heroin that uh, that that Kurt had taken. Uh, that, that was in Kurt's system. He had been so assigned to find out where that heroin came from, and at the, so at the time of his death, that's what he was doing. That was his assignment. And then he's he shot dead on the uh, uh, sort of ambushed uh, while, while he was driving home from work in plain clothes. And it, it's a little bit suspicious. It, it, I, it, it's a bit far fetched to to say that oh well, this is. A, this is linked to the case, but certainly. But you never know because there's just too many, too many coincidences, too many suspicious circumstances here. Tom, I have a question for you. You have been on this case for so many years. Has there been anything ever to change your mind? Oh no, I uh, my. <laughs> I've become more and more convinced over the years, as you know and as you can tell from listening to the tapes and as you can tell from talking to me over the years. Um, I've gotten more and more email from people that have offered information. I've gotten phone calls from people that will tell me things off the record. There was a, a, a member of Nirvana actually came to my office and talked to me that I, I have never uh, you know, cared to discuss openly about. And um, there's a lot of things that have happened that have done nothing but convince me that we're on the right trail and convince me more and more that we're right. But where does this go with you? Okay, you've been on this case for so many years. When will you say, okay, I'm happy? I'm happy? Yeah. I'm. Well, when, I, when will you say, I feel justice has been done? When Courtney probably wants to sue Tom and he can have all this evidence, you know, in front of the public. You know, you know, I, I guess I could probably, <clears throat> yeah. Well, of course, that that would make me happy, sure, because we we would uncover the information that we're trying to uncover. I'll tell you what, Tom, that's a real good question yeah. that Ian just asked you. So we're going to cover it when we come back, okay? okay. All right. So we'll come back. We'll take the remaining calls. We're talking to a panel, a great panel. Tom Grant, the original investigator that Courtney hired to find Kurt Cobain. He stuck with the case. Lost a lot of money because she didn't pay him. He did this because the evidence pointed to Courtney, and he didn't want to give up. Even though the Seattle police said, get out of here, he hasn't given up. And these authors haven't given up either. They just released a hot new book called Love and Death. It's Ian Halperin and Max Wallace. And we're taking your calls at 800-ROCK-TALK, 800-762-5825. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Are you there, you Max? Doing? Yeah, we're all here. All right, let's uh, now. Let's go ahead, Tom. The question that Max, I guess it was Max or Ian, asked you. Let's let's go over yeah, that. Yeah, Ian again. asked basically, what am I after here? What's the bottom line? What would satisfy me? Um, and I guess the best way I could answer that is, I've sort of set the bar low in a sense. Um, I will be satisfied if the police and the medical examiners in Seattle show a sign of good faith. First of all, they cannot prove forensically that this was a suicide, and in most cases of suicide, it can be easily proven. I say they cannot prove it. If they can prove it, then come forward with your proof. If you can't do that, then simply change the finding from suicide to undetermined. 
That's where I've set the bar. If that's accomplished, then they've shown good faith. The case is reopened because it's undetermined. It's no longer a suicide. It's undetermined. So, Tom, everything Tom, you else won't from mind that point on is Courtney's going to take care of itself. Same. Tom, you won't mind if Courtney's on the same golf course as O.J. Yeah. 